Hello. We're going to analyze a common base amplifier. First, we're going to do the DC and mid-band analysis, so calculating the Q point, and then the small signal voltage gain, input resistance and output resistance. And then we're going to calculate the frequency response, which essentially boils down to finding out the value of the low frequency, the low cutoff frequency, and the high cutoff frequency, FL and FH. I have drawn my common base amplifier. Um, with all my resistor and capacitor values, uh, notice that um, I have a, a signal source VS followed by a source resistance RS, uh, and then my signal is fed into my common base amplifier. Um, in a common base, this, the input signal goes into the emitter, the output is taken out of the collector. Uh, both input and output are uh, fed into the circuit via a coupling capacitor and then taken out of the circuit via another coupling capacitor. Um, I have also drawn the standard frequency response for a uh, transistor amplifier and it resembles that the frequency response of a bandpass filter. So it has a low cutoff frequency, which is determined by uh, coupling and bypass capacitors, as well as a high cutoff frequency FH, which is determined by the internal transistor capacitances, parasitics, load capacitances, etc. Um, I have written down uh, the circuit parameters, so I'm using a 2N3904 MPN transistor, uh, and I'm making the assumption that I have a beta of 100, an early voltage of 100 volts, and then the input and output um, capacitances of 8 picofarads and 4 picofarads come straight out of the data sheet for the transistor. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, first the Q point and then the mid-band analysis. So DC and mid-band analysis. And for my DC analysis, I'm going to assume all my uh, bypass and coupling capacitors are open circuits. Uh, and so I'm going to calculate my base voltage, which is equal to VCC times, and I can calculate it um, using the voltage divider equa equation by noting that uh, VCC gets divided between um, R2 and R1, and the base voltage will be the voltage across R2. Uh, now, technically speaking, um, R2 is connected in parallel with uh, the input resistance looking into the base of the transistor Q1. And so, technically speaking, I will have to write um, R2 in parallel with uh, beta times RE, RE being since my capacitors are um, open circuits, it's going to be the series combination of RE1 and RE2, which is 2 kilo ohms. And that's RE. It's the overall RE. Uh, divided by R1 plus R2 in parallel with beta times RE. Now, since RE is uh, 2 kilo ohms times beta of 100 is 200 kilo ohms, and R2 is 20 kilo ohms. Um, it is met that R2 is much smaller than beta times R, and therefore um, we can safely ignore the current going into the base of the amplifier and just approximate that expression as R2, which is going to dominate the parallel combination. So I'm going to approximate this as uh, VCC, which is 20 times R2, which is 20K, in parallel with 220K plus 20K. And that's around 1.7 volts. Next, I can calculate my emitter voltage, which is just going to be the base voltage minus one diode drop of 0.7 volts. So 1.7 minus 0.7 is 1 volt. Uh, my collector current, I see. I'm going to approximate as being equal to the emitter current, and so it's going to be VE divided by the emitter resistance. Again, I'm doing the DC analysis, so I consider all of the emitter resistance since capacitor CC1 will act as an open circuit. Um, so VE is 1 volt, RE is 2 kilo ohms. That gives me a collector current of 0.5 milliamps. And finally, my collector voltage will be VCC. minus the voltage drop across resistor RC, which is IC times RC. So 20 minus 0.5 milli times 20K. 
and that's 10 volts. Uh, so this is my, my DC bias point. For my mid-band analysis, I'm going to now assume all the coupling and bypass capacitors are acting as short circuits, meaning they're letting the signals of interest through. And so I'm going to calculate first my mid-band voltage gain. And for a common emitter or for a common base amplifier, um, we said that the um, magnitude of the voltage gain is going to be equal to uh, the resistance connected to the collector divided by the resistance connected to the emitter. Now, in this expression, notice that I am um, ignoring or neglecting RE2 because it is being bypassed by capacitor CC1, which is now a short circuit. Um, and therefore, my overall resistance connected to the emitter is now um, RE1 plus little RE, the dynamic resistance of the base to emitter diode. Um, and then my resistance connected to the collector is RC. Technically speaking, I'm also neglecting little RO. Um, so if I wanted to be more accurate, I would say the overall resistance connected to the collector is RC in parallel with little RO, and the overall resistance connected to the emitter is little RE plus RE1. Um, and so this would be RC, which is 20K, in parallel with little RO, which I haven't calculated. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'm going to calculate both little RE and little RO since I'm going to be needing both of them. So my little RE is going to be equal to thermal voltage divided by the quiescent collector current or 25 millivolts divided by 0.5 milliamps, which is 50 ohms. Yeah, my little RO will be the early voltage divided by the collector current, which is 100 volts divided by 0.5 milliamps or 200 kilo ohms. So it will be 20K in parallel with 200K divided by 50 plus 150. Now we can see that since RC is much smaller than little RO, it will dominate the parallel combination. So we can approximate this as being uh, 20K divided by 200 or a gain of 100 in linear scale and 40 dB in decibel scale. Now, this is the what we will call the nominal gain of the amplifier if I didn't have a load connected. So I'm going to call this the um, AB midband nominal. If I uh, connect a load resistor, now I should see some loading effects. And the way a loading effect manifests itself is by decreasing the effective gain of the amplifier. Um, and so I could calculate my midband voltage gain effective. That will be with the load connected. And uh, the effect of the load resistor will be that it will be yet another resistance connected to the collector of the amplifier, because that capacitor CC2, uh, we're considering it now a short circuit. And so my overall collector resistance will be RC uh, going to a signal ground in parallel with little RO in parallel with RL. So this could be RC in parallel with little RO in parallel with RL divided by little RE plus RE1. So 20K in parallel with 200K in parallel with uh, 100K divided by 50 plus 150. Um, and the parallel combination of resistances will be 15K in the numerator divided by 200, which will give me a gain of 50 or 34 dBs. So we can see that there is uh, quite a significant change between the nominal gain of the amplifier and the effective gain once the load resistor is connected. Um, and the reason why we want to consider that is because when we uh, consider the frequency effects and we're calculating the cut of frequencies and whatnot, we will want to keep in mind what is the effective gain. All right, let's go for the input resistance and output resistance. My input resistance to the amplifier, I'm going to calculate it as being the resistance looking... Um, through the coupling capacitor at the input. 
So I'm considering RS to be uh, not part of the input resistance of the amplifier, but rather the source resistance associated with signal source Vs. So the area for my amplifier would be, um, and again, I'm going to substitute CC1 with a short circuit. And so looking at the terminal, I see RE2 in parallel with, and now a series combination of RE1 in series with little re, and then in series with whatever is connected uh, to the base of the transistor divided by beta by the inverse um, reflection rule. What we have on the other side of the transistor is R1, which is going to a signal ground in parallel with R2, in parallel with zero, because I have my CV capacitor directly connected to ground. This, uh, for AC or midband analysis purposes, it is assured to ground, all that divided by beta. So we can see that this term disappears. And so this just becomes um, RE2 in parallel with the series combination of RE1 plus little RE. Also 1.85 kilo ohms in parallel with um, 150 plus 50 or 200. That's um, approximately 180 ohms for my input resistance, which is something I should expect, a low input resistance for a common base amplifier. My output resistance I'm going to calculate and I'm going to label it as the resistance looking um, through CC2 back into the circuit. And I'm not going to consider RL part of the output resistance. I consider that the uh, um, amplifier has an output resistance and then that's in series with RL. But RL is something I'm going to consider to be separate. So my RL will be RC in parallel with little row or 20K in parallel with 200K, which is approximately 20 kilo ohms. And again, it's important that uh, we understand, you know, what assumptions we are making along the way. Uh, so remember for the nominal gain, we assumed uh, no RL connected to the circuit, or, or we were not considering the effects of RL. This is with the load resistance connected or considered. And then for my R in and R out, I am excluding uh, RS in one case and I am excluding RL in the other. Um, and, you know, and it depends. Some people will, for example, determine the input resistance to be the input resistance looking directly from the source. And so they will include RS in series with, um, with everything else for the input resistance. As long as you um, keep your notation clear and you know what you're referring to, um, then hopefully you will be careful enough not to double add things in the end. Um, so that's it. That will be the uh, DC and mid-band analysis. Next, we're going to take a look at the frequency response. Thank you.